Okay, today we are tying the painted Tetra. Uh, I had some good luck with this, this uh, fly uh, as a teaser for fluke. And uh, that's, what, that's the pattern that I'm going to use today uh, to, to catch fluke later on. So in the vise, we have a Gamakatsu 2 watt big game tin plated hook. And we're going to start with uh, the uh, 210 denier flat wax nylon in white. I'm going to lay, lay down a base. And I'm going to tie all the way down to the bend of the hook. So this fly will be tied in um, two stages. First, we'll, we'll tie in the, um, the first ingredients. So I'm going to pull that back a little bit. I don't like it down too far because I don't want to impede on the hook gap. So I'm going to actually go to the point of the hook rather than the bend. All right. Then I'm going to lay down my first uh, marabou feather. This is a uh, fuchsia. This is actually Orvis rapabu. And it's barred black fuchsia, which is a nice color. And you can see it's got a lot of motion in it. Now you have to keep in mind this material will compress in the water. So I like to do three feathers. First, I'm going to lay my, uh, the bottom feather. And uh, all three feathers will be above uh, on the top of the hook rather than underneath so that there's no interference here. Sometimes I also like to, um, to uh, beat this hook with uh, you know, a minnow or something like that just to add some extra attraction. So we're going to go uh, the length of the hook shank all right, off the back just like so. Just got to wrap down. Just to secure it, and I'm going to wrap a little bit forward, a couple wraps to secure it. Um, this doesn't really matter what you have here because you're going to wrap, be wrapping this in um, the um, Palmered Chenille later on. I feel like if I were making a true painted Tetra, that I would have that blue color, but I, I don't have any of that. So, all right. So that's the first step. Now, what we're going to do is take some, what we have is um, silver flashaboo here. So I'm going to make this the length of the marabou, and I'm going to double it. I'm going to actually um, cut it in half, cut a strand in half. And then I'll use the other strand on the other side. Let's put that there. I'm going to match that with a pearl crystal flash. So I will also cut that one in half. A piece of pearl crystal flash. All right. And I like to do it this way because it, you know, it looks more natural. Not that this looks real natural. It's more of an attractor pattern, but it, it hides the flash in, in the, um, within the marabou. Okay, we can trim that in a minute, and I'm going to do the other side on the side closest to me. We'll do the same thing.
Doesn't have to be perfect. Trim this side up here. Okay, looks pretty good. What is this? Back there. All right, and then for I'm going to take two more marabou feathers and mate them together. But that looks pretty good there, like that. So I can lay that on top there. Trim that. And wrap that nice and tight. Looks good. Okay. So we're ready for the Palmer chenille. I have this in pearl color. For the painted tetra, I like to use the pearl color for the Palmer, Palmer chenille. So this is our Palmer chenille. You can see it's quite bright. And when it's in the water, it really catches the light and catches the fluke's attention. And all right, here we go. So we're gonna tie that in. I just trimmed a few of the fibers so that it doesn't slip. It's very slippery stuff, so it should hold it tight. And then when it wraps on itself, it should be good. So what I'm gonna do is gonna wrap this thread down to about an eye's length away from the eye because I'm gonna end up tying in a thread-based a thread -based head there and applying my sticky eyes, which will then have epoxy on it. So you wanna have enough room there to make the uh, to make the um, you know the the base to bu build up. Just make sure your flash is out of the way. I saw it in there. Okay. So now I'm going to start wrapping, and I will speed up the video to show this. But what I'm doing here. Is I'm going to stroke back the fibers, and you want this pretty tight. You can see as I go, I'm going to stroke it back every time, pretty much. So I'm pulling this tight and making sure that most of the fibers orient, orient towards the back of the fly. Stroking these fibers back every time I wrap pretty much and we're almost to that end spot I want to make sure I'm not too far the thread can move on you sometimes so That looks about about right, so I'm going to wrap my thread so that I have enough room to do the head Snip there, pull back, and note that this uh, 110 or 210 denier flat wax nylon will build up a, a head pretty quickly, so looks pretty good, just like so. All right, we're going to finish that head there.
<clears throat> and that is your um, basis for this this fly. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, finish with some head cement just to bind up those um, those uh, thread wrappings on the head. So I put it on my little bit of head cement on my bodkin here, and I will just apply that like so. This is going to be all uh, coated in the epoxy anyway, so it's not really going to matter too much. But um, the next step will be using these uh, fish skull living eyes. And this one is just the uh, ice. You can see on there it's the ice color. It's just like clear. And they really give it a realistic view. So what I will do first is um, put the eyes on. Uh, you could use some uh, super glue if you'd like, because they don't they don't really stick too well. You know they they kind of. So I'm going to put one on here, like so, and then I'll put one on the opposite side, right over where the thread wraps are. It looks pretty good like that. Looks good. So um, that's the first step of this fly. The second step is applying the Z epoxy. Okay, so I've mixed up mixed up my Z epoxy, and I'm going to apply it. I I usually like to put one drop on top. Try not to get it on the fibers because it's going to harden them up. So I'll put a drop right there. And then I'll put a drop on one eye. And I'll come back to the other eye. All the time you want to keep an eye on this. Don't let it get um, too far into the base of the fibers because this stuff gets really hard. And if it's in a place that you don't really want it, it'll um, impede your um, fly. But you want to get it definitely all around and try to avoid uh, getting it in the eye of the hook. So then you can turn it and apply it more as you go. Just like so. Now it's goes on opaque and will dry clear sometimes. Sometimes it'll be clear as well, but depends on how long it's been sitting. The actual z epoxy will kind of cloud up. It looks pretty good. All right, so this is the finished fly, the painted Tetra. I use it as a teaser and it works great on fluke. I have it in a number of different colors. Um, give it a try. Thanks for watching. Swinging in the boat. All right, got him. Let's see. Got him on the teaser with a gulp on it. That was key right there. Close. Up 17. 17. Nice fish.
Oh yeah, that's a keeper. Oh yeah. Let's see. Finally, I got a few short, many, a couple shorts. I lost one on the anchor. <laughs> this one is a good, yeah, he's definitely 18. Probably about uh, 19 and a half going in. Let's get this guy settled here on the teaser. and he took the goat. Just bought that goat, bro. Oh, he really wanted that one. Ouch. That's some sharp ass teeth, dude. little guy on the teaser again little guy little guy 